Hi everybody, Lisa over at iRepair iDevices, and today in my workbench I'll be working on another Bose three disc CD changer. Uh, this unit came in indicating disc error on all three drives, so uh, what I did so far was just remove the lid. So now what I'm going to do is just plug it into the main unit here, and I want to see what exactly is going on so I know where to start. So I have it connected to the main unit, and now I'm just going to bring in the power. And... If you can hear it, it is starting to do the startup, the normal, what I call the initialization. Uh, all three switches are going through the self-check. And then last, we'll see this mechanism go up and down. And again, it's just testing out the rails, making sure everything is clear. So at this point, it's telling me it's being told to turn on, so which is a good thing. Uh, next up is I'm going to grab a disc here. And well, first, let's see, show you what the main uh, unit looks like. All right, so we're not getting anything on the screen there. So it's indicating that it's ready to go. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and put a disk in drive two. And it should feed it in. And let's watch the screen here. Reading disk. Okay, it's reading disk, and it's not spinning, as you can see down there. And we get disk error. All right, so let's go ahead and eject this guy. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and unplug them from the main unit. And let's let's um, let's figure out what's going on here. So like I, like I said in the beginning, we know that's being told to turn on. So I'm not going to focus on the main board uh, down here. So what I'm going to do is just re remove it from the housing here. Disconnect the cables. And take it out. And of course, if you're doing this, uh, you're going to have four screws to remove. But I already, like I said, I took the lid off and took the, the four screws off already. So here is the mechanism uh, out of the unit. And... Let's see, where do I want to start? Well, since I know, again, not to repeat myself, but since I know it's, it's being told to turn on and the gears were working, I'm not going to look at this part of the board here, all right? I'm not going to look at this motor. I'm not going to look at these gears or the motor under here at this point. So I'm going to right now focus on the drive mechanism itself because, like it says, the disc was being fed in and then it stopped. So my thing right away is going to jump to, let's look at the mechanism here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take it apart. So we're going to have a few screws here on the top here. Let's see, should I turn my overhead camera on? Let's see. There we go. So I'm just going to remove some of the screws on the top here. Okay. Will the light hurt it? or Yeah, it's going to make too much of a glare. So, three. Five. Got five screws out of this bracket. So let's pull him off. Set him off to the side. I'm going to swing this around. And uh, it looks a little grayish there. Let me see if I can get a better. Mm, let's see. What's going on here with the only do gain? Well, I don't want to waste time adjusting this, so I do apologize if it's not a clear picture, but I'm going to move on. All right, so then I removed the one screw in the back here, removed the bracket, so this is gone. And then we have a screw on the bottom here, or on the side. Pull 
pull him off and this is just going to lift off all right so right now we've got uh, the top taken off and got a screw back here I'm gonna remove and need to unplug the drive itself and we should be able to lift it right off okay so there it is it's out of the housing so let's see yeah it's still too much of a glare all right this is really bothering me so i do apologize so let me see here if i can get this cleared up quickly enough no go come on a little bit better Okay, well, that's going to have to do for now. At least it's a little bit better than what it was for. So now the mechanism is out of the uh, drive here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this motor right here. All right, like I said, since, it, since I know that it was being told to turn on and it did do the self-check, it did go up and down on the rails there. Uh, so I know that this mechanism is working uh, to a point. So the first thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at this little small motor on the uh, side here. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to take uh, some ohm resistance reading here. So I'm going to switch you to the side camera. There we go. And get my meter here okay I'm getting 12 point about 12.5 ohms Yep, about 12. I'm going to round it up to 12 ohms, so I know that's good. And then we're going to take a look at the spindle motor. Turn it around here. All right. Get my probes a little bit better. There we go. I have it until I look away, then it slips off. These are tiny little. Hold on here. These are small motor tabs on. Here. These motors have small tabs on here, so you got to get your meat. You got to get your probes in there just right. Okay. All right. 815 All right. Yeah, this is this is not good. It's like all over the place. Getting 21, 211, 5.8 40 ohms, 32 ohms and it'll go up to couple of times it went up to 145 kilo ohms
23, 19, 7, 92. Yeah, there's something going on with this motor here. It's I'm not getting a, a steady reading. So what I'm going to also do now, since I do a, a, um, a resistance reading, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some uh, power to these motors here. So I got my external power supply here. And I don't have it on. Uh, I'm not applying a lot of power to it. So I got four volts coming into under with, with approximately about a half an amp. So first we're going to look at this um, side motor here. And I'm just going to touch the probes here or the, uh, uh, the terminals on the motor. And we should see the spindle move back and forth. Or, yeah, so let me uh, put the overhead on for you. Yeah. There we go. So this is the motor I'm going to be testing. So if it's working, we're going to see it ride back and forth on this rail here. All right, so I'll try to keep my hands out of the way so you can see it on the camera. All right, so that's going forward. We're going to reverse polarity. All right, you see it go back? Do it again. Yep. And now we're going to go forward. All right. So I know that is working fine. Like, and I was getting a good ohms reading on their resistance reading. So now I'm going to test this uh, spindle motor. Again, we're going to put the probes on the terminal, positive and negative. And nothing. I'm not getting anything here. And what you should hear is I have another spindle sitting here. All right. So I have another spindle sitting right here. I'll show you what it should sound like on a good working one. Got underneath the camera here. You should hear the motor spin. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the positive side of the terminal and negative. And do you hear that? You're not going to be able to see it because I have it upside down, but the, the spindle is rotating. So what this, uh, let me move this guy to the side because this is a good one. So what this one is telling me is I have a short on the motor itself. So this is going to be the first thing I'm going to tackle. I'm going to go ahead and re replace it. But again, we're just going to go ahead and test it again. Uh, put you to the side camera here. Boom. All right. What are we getting for readings here? All right. 6.4. Let's see here. Yep. 420s and 0.71 ohms, 10. This isn't consistent enough. And we can say, and, and as you can see, or you saw all that, not saw, but here you heard that I couldn't even get the motor to turn on. So I tried to apply at least four volts to the motor and was not turning on. And the resistance is all over the place. It's not consistent like this one was um, um, on this one here, which is about. Um, well, this was 15 ohms, which is fine. Normally, these motors sit at, uh, I think it's about 6.4 ohms. Let me go ahead and bring that uh, good you good working unit back up here. All right, so this is the good one here. And we're going to go ahead and test the terminals on here. Switch it to the side camera. There we go. See, 5.1, oh, oh. I was on the wrong one there. So you gotta, there we go. Usually I will see a range anywhere between 4.8 up to 6.2 ohms. So I know uh, that is the usual resistance on these motors here. So what I'm going to do is set this guy to the side since he's a good one. 
I'm going to go ahead and replace this spindle motor on the bad one. So let me turn off my power supply here. I don't need it anymore for right now. And let's just set down this guy. And I need to turn on my overhead. So we're going to... And let me get my parts over here and pull out a spindle motor. So I got a replacement motor right here. So set him off and let's see, I've got my solder station on. So I'm going to have to take this apart. You want to be careful when you're taking this apart because this uh, material easily bends and if you don't if you if you aren't careful with it you go put it back together it's not going to work properly so I just had a spring go flying well I'll find it later I have plenty laying around here all right so we got the springs removed got the top removed there So let's get the optical lens out of the way. I'm going to shove them to the back here. I'm, I'm just manually rotating them into the back. I want to get them away from the uh, soldering iron. Okay, that's good enough. All right. I'm going to remove the screws here. Alright. Number one. Two. Yeah. Let's see if the my desoldering iron will work on this, so if not, then I'll just use the regular soldering iron, but I want to see if the desold my desoldering gun will work. Yeah. Worked good. Alright, so now we got that. I think it worked good, yeah. So I'm just straight straightening out the the wires there so I could pull it out of the terminal and now let's work on this side again you want to be careful you know what I'm going to just go ahead and remove these ribbon cables here this one mm, all right I'm gonna remove him stick him under there we go. And let's get the iron on this side here. You can kind of see. Uh, let's see. Alright. And let me straighten out the stranded wires here and just pull out the leads. out the negative side and oh, are you still stuck in there I need a little bit more from the uh, a little bit more there we go there's a little speck of solder still holding it in, so there we go. All right, and the motor should slide right out. Oh, gotta move the optical lens back a little bit further. A little bit further. There we go. All right, old motor is out.
All right, as you could see on the meter down here, you know, we're getting 3.05 kilo ohms. You know, it's going between, you know, 1.8 up to 300 to, uh, or 1.8 to 3.9 kilo ohms. So this is, this motor is shot. It's, uh, there's a short in there. So I'm going to go ahead and set him off to the side. Again, here is the new uh, motor. And again, we'll test the uh, resistance on it. And we're getting 6.1, which is normal. So we're going to go ahead and slide them in. And let's see here. I'm going to first put the screws back in so I have something holding it in place. Okay, is that good? Yep. And I can adjust it once it's in place there. Just loosen up this guy over here and just make sure it's all in place. There we go, and then tighten it down. Okay, so we've got it. Uh, we've got the screws back in, and then now here we have uh, the leads that we need to solder back in place. So. And again, you got to pay attention to the orientation. There is a negative and a positive, so you got to make sure you do use the correct um, wires to the right tabs. So I'm just going to go ahead and feed the positive through the positive side here. to clean up the hole a little bit. Sometimes when these come, they come pre-tinned, so... <clears throat> Gotta clear the hole out. And let's get this side cleared out. here. Thank you.
game. So now let me get my soldering iron here. Positive side is entered or in place. And then I'll go through with some um, uh, actual solder to tack it in better. But right now I'm just feeding it through the hole and just getting it tap tacked in. Then I'll go back and, like I said, strengthen up the solder joints. All right, we'll feed this one. It says these these holes are very tiny. Okay, and let's just all right. So I want to make sure that it's not touching any sides of the motor itself, because that will short it out once we apply power. So I want to make sure that nothing is touching. I'm just gonna bend that wire a little bit. This side is good. All right, so now let's get some actual solder in here and tack this guy in. All right. And I put it away, didn't I? All right, let's see here. Okay. Okay, nice joint there, and let's tack up the negative side, and there we go. I pushed, I pushed on the wire a little bit, a little too much, and it started coming out. Let's push it back in, hold it in place, let it set. There we go. Alright, let's take a look at the weld. Alright, looks good. Move this guy. Now to make sure there's no short, I'm going to go and test the motor here. Let's do continuity test. Okay. All right. These two these two terminals should be touching. These two should be. Um, connected internally. These two should be connected internally, so that's good. Now let's go across. Okay, we're good. And let's see here. Let's touch the housing itself with the positive side. No short. And the negative side to the housing. Good, no short. So we're not touching. Um, nothing's shorting now. Now let's do a, a resistance reading. Let's see what we get. There we go, 6.3, so we're good. Keep moving it around here. 6.3, we're good. All right, and before I go ahead and power it back, or before I get it reassembled, I'm going to apply some power from the power supply here. So let's turn off the overhead now. Uh, put my power supply back on. And let's hit the... Cut the positive side. And oh, let's get the wires here. Positive to positive, negative to negative, and we should hear the motor turn. You should hear that. All right. So we will start with this and get it reassembled and see if this solves it. Now, there could be multiple issues going on, but right now, this is the first thing that I, uh, the first thing I'm looking at because that was a. Uh, uh, clear indication that there was a short on the motor 
itself. So let's get the ribbon cable back in place here. All right, that guy's good. Let's just put him under. And let's see. This gets slide under. the clip here so let's just I'm probably off camera here no nope. let's slide it underneath and then in there we go no nope. all right Try this again. There we go. Push it in. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay, it's hard to tell if it's in. We'll know when I go to plug it in and if it works or not. Because it's it's like you you can't normally what you, normally the 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 um the pins on the cables face upward when you're plugging them in. However, on this setup here, these are facing downward, so it's hard to tell if you have them in place. So you have to kind of go off by feel and and luck so <laughs> all right so i'm going to turn on the overhead and start getting this reassembled here so again you want to be careful when putting this back together so let's see I'll go this way in and he's in I can I could straighten it out once I could straighten the, sp the springs out once they're in place all right let's just there we go and let's get the one worm gear put into place here Now, I'll most likely have to go through and do adjustments on here, which is fine. My main thing right now is just to at least get it powered on and see if it will um, play a CD. Now, if it's off, meaning, you know, if it's off balance, that's fine. Um, at least I know, um, at least I know that uh, the, the problem was resolved. All right, so let's get the last spring in here and the last gear clip him down sometimes I can I mean maybe one, one out of every ten I'll be lucky enough to where it um, it's aligned the first time I go.
go ahead and reassemble it. So, all right. So let's get it back in the housing here. Again, you don't want to force it. The, this material is very fragile. If you bend it, you're going to have a hard time straightening, straightening it out. So you just want to be careful and just take your time. All right, so that guy's in. It's all at the bottom sitting. All right, let's... It's not quite flush, so I'm going to go ahead and move the optical lens to the front there. There we go. Plug in the cable down here, which I normally forget. So when I go ahead and turn it on and do the self-test, it stops halfway through. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder why. Flip it over, I'm like, don't forget to plug in the cable. In. All right, so let's get the side brackets on here. Okay. There we go. Let's get the back bracket on. Now, I'm not going to put all five screws back onto this top plate here, just in, just a couple of them, just to hold down, you get them held in place, just in case I have to do take it apart again. I don't have to worry about removing all the screws. So I'm just going to add a couple on here that I know will be good enough for it to hold in place while it turns on and accepts a CD or two. So let's get one guy on this end over here. And let's get the this little guy. Alright, so moment of truth. Did it fix it? So let's see here. Turn off the light. Plug in the cable. Alright. Got the power. Okay. Starting up. Good thing. Doing the self check so we didn't disrupt any of that. Like I said in the beginning, it's going to test all three uh, drives two, three, and four. And then it's going to uh, test the rail up and down. And then it's going to go in place. Okay. And I'm going to flip the front over here on the main unit. And we can see that it's ready for a CD. So we're going to go ahead and get my CD here. And remember from the beginning, it did accept the CD. However, it didn't spin. It just sat there. So let's see if we can get, get a little bit further than what we got before. Okay, it's in, it's spinning, reading disc, whoa, hot damn.
We have output. Where's my remote? Can't play it long due to copyright protection. All right, let's just stop. Now I will have to tweak it a little bit because I hear a little grindy, not grindy, but I do hear a little rubbing going on, which is normal. When you do take apart these mechanisms, you do have to go back and do some realignment, which is normal. So, but I am very happy that, um, that the only thing what was wrong with it was the, the motor spindle. Uh, was bad so I'm gonna end the video here we're not gonna I'm not gonna waste any more of your time I'm watching me uh, uh, going through and taking apart and adjusting it you can find my other videos on that but yeah so this was a successful repair again just to do a, a quick recap uh, this unit did come in uh, indicating disc error on all three drives and from the test that uh, I took on the spindle motor it was a short on the on the motor itself because we were getting high resistance. Normally, it's usually between anywhere between four to six point three ohms, and we were getting readings all over the place. It wasn't consistent enough. And then when I tried to apply power to the motor itself, it wasn't doing anything. So uh, clear indication that the uh, problem lied uh, laid in the motor itself. So um, so again, I will do a quick. Uh, let me just uh, go ahead and play it again and show you on the main unit here track one we're not getting any disc errors so there you have it i hope you learned something from this video and please like subscribe share this video and also um it will be listed down in the description i do offer mail-in repair so if you have anything laying around a bow system macbook laptop drones anything that's not, that you're having issues with um, go ahead and, and email me the email is up at the top of the screen there along with my phone number contact me I, I will be glad to give you a quote on, on anything that you have you know that you need that needs fixing so again um, this was a successful repair and you guys all have uh, uh, enjoy the rest of your day all right bye